Hello, my name is Lauren Gauss. Welcome to my presentation. My dissertation title is Exploring Men's Self Health Book Preferences and Treatment Seeking Behavior for Mental Health, and it's a preliminary study. Before I start, I'd like to give a big thank to my course director and research supervisor, Professor Faye Schult, and also all the teachers who have been part of this experience, uh, Susan, Rachel, Kevin, and also Robert. Um, thank you for your feedback and constructive criticism to help me with this research. I'd like also to thank the members of my group, Maria and Jade, for their help to design the study, and more particularly to Kelly for all the work we've done together on this research. Um, I'd like also to thank all my friends and family who supported me through this dissertation and Bangor University, and moreover, all the participants that give their time and share their experience with us. Thank you. Self-help resources include a wide range of resources and the one we particularly looked at was bibliotherapy which is the therapeutic use of books and self-help books outside of the professional setting. It's fair to say there are some challenges that we have to address such as the potential commercial exploitation the therapeutic culture and also the unrealistic promises in personal development that might stop people from looking for help and as well the constant bombardment of positive and happy message and successful can mislead the client. The use of self-help is very effective for mild to moderate mental health issues and it provides opportunities for self-reliance and anonymity and it can overcome obstacles um, from accessing mental health professional and it helps with confidentiality and cost. However, we self-help book constantly promoting um, happiness and success it can be very misleading like we saw earlier and it's led to a new wave of anti-self-help book which um, help uh, encourage clients to let go of all of them expectations and just embrace that what's happened has happened. Celebrities have a massive impact on the self-help industry and by studying the personas it can help in analysing their influence and our discourse on psychology and mental health. Self-help book with role model from famous people and celebrities is a very popular choice for men but it can make them feel inadequate and inferior if they do not match uh, these people. We recruited 200 participants for this research for an online questionnaires. Um, participants had to be 18 year old and over and we recruited them through social media, a word of mouth and also a program called SONA Recruitment Portal. SONA is used by Bangor University to give extra credit to psychology students by taking part in other students um, research. Um, it's encouraging participation, however it has its drawback as it's got limited accessibility and possibly a sampling bias. Um, inclusion criteria we used were to be able to speak either English or Welsh and exclusion criteria were any history of mental illness 
uh, been under the age of 18 or been engaged in therapy or counselling. Um, the participants that we recruited through the SONA programme uh, receive course credit but did not get any monetary compensation. And to make sure we had the diverse sample, um, the recruitment advert was distributed to everyone uh, in groups over 18 and, and the survey was also given bilingually. Our research used a design that we call quantitative survey. Um, it's a um, design that looks at numbers rather than quality. Um, in looked into factors that influence the choice of self-help book and also the difference in genders in use of self-help book versus therapy for mental health problems. Um, the survey was done on their own with closed-ended question and it captured the book preference and demographic information of the participants and if you want to see a questionnaire and demographic question will be available in the handout. Now bear with me as we have to have um, some jargon I'm afraid, very technical but it's part of the research process. Um, so we used for the the data that we got um, something called descriptive statistic that use frequencies and percentage. In other words, it looks at how often one answer is repeated and make a percentage of um, how many times it's been repeated. Um, we also use uh, something called the key square test and modes and that was to look at the relationship between what we were looking at. Um, all analyses were conducted using a software that is called SPSS, which is stands for Statistical Package for the Social Science and is um, widely used in uh, research, especially university research. Um, the results were presented in a dissertation using tables and charts and the findings where you will see in the results section a bit further were also included in the study. Um, in particular, the analysis um, tested the hypothesis that examined the proportion of participants who prefer self-help book written by celebrity versus professional. However, we had a second hypothesis too, which was to um, investigate the relationship between masculinity and the preference for self-help book versus traditional therapy for mental health problems. So now we finish with um, the jargon we move on to how we proceed with the study. So we used um, fictional profiles that we created, one of a celebrity author and one of a professional author. Um, um, in it, it gave some piece of general well-being advice um, a bit about the person. Um, you can find the phone profile in the handouts and after looking at both profiles the participants were asked, were asked to choose which one was their preferred profile and rate the qualities of the profile. Um, the study also used the questionnaire to ask about the motivation to seek further help and also the participant demographics as stated previously. Um, so what we used was um, what you call fictional self-help book blurb, so in other words, a profile uh, created by us. 
uh, a questionnaire. I indicated the preferences on the self-help book choice and also a rating for the professional and celebrity profile. And finally, we had two more, which were the demographic questionnaires and the motivation for therapy questionnaire. As every study, we had to follow some rules and regulation, also called ethics. Um, so this study was following the ethical guidelines of the BPS, British Psychological Society, and the BACP, which is the British Association for Counselling and Psychotherapy. Um, we, our study got approved by the Bangor University School of Human and Behavioural Science Research Ethics and Governance Committee. You can find the ethic approval in our handout. Um, before to access the questionnaires, the participants were presented with an information um, guidelines and a consent form that was that included a confidentiality and disclosure statement which you can find in the handouts too and only the one who agreed to the term of the consent form had access to the questionnaire and to keep confidentiality and anonymity all the personal data was immediately removed from the data file after the download and any participants email were used only in blind copy to ensure participants email address were not visible to others and um, we had the standard constant templates that um, was slightly changed for this study and it was used to ensure that the participants understood fully the purpose of the study and the procedure that would be used. It was followed by a debrief form at the end of the survey. You can find all this in the handout. And um, after the analysis, all the participants were given email, um, were emailed with a summary of the research outcome. Um, but we could not give personal feedback due to removing the data before analyzing. So for the first hypothesis, we found that uh, professional books got a uh, best response of uh, likely and that um, the least common were prefer not to say and unlikely from the celebrity the most common response was very unlikely and the least common was very likely so this result shows that participants tended to prefer professional books over celebrities but many were neutral and it indicates no strong preferences overall so, an interesting part for me um, is when we looked at how men uh, cope with their mental health problem, we found that, yes, we're more likely to look for professional help um, against self-help book, which is quite a surprise and goes against my hypothesis. However, the overall result was that male are more likely to deal with their mental health problem on their own and that is the best result that I could expect. So the result varied um, between different mental health subcategory. For example, for problems self-confidence, self-esteem and addiction, men will rely more on professional sources for support uh, for better self and sense of self, uh, men were relying more on themselves for support. Anger, appetite and eating habits also um, showed that they were coping on their own, mostly. 
Trauma, PTSD, and suicide on foot luckily showed that they relied on professional sources and coping with life changes and transition were also a majority of coping on their own with a slight difference to family for support also. And for chronic illness and life-threatening condition, it also shows that they will rely on the help of their families for support or even professional help. So the two aims of this study were to examine um, people's preferences in choosing a book, however it was written by a professional or celebrity. Um, looking at the preference of male participants when they look for support for mental health and well-being issues. So this study has given us an insight into the preference in books and the coping strategy for men who deal with mental health issues. So when we found that participants were more likely to read a book written by a professional than a celebrity, and that a significant number of them said they were neutral to both options, um, it shows that there was no real strong preference for either choice. In the future research, it could be explored what reason are behind these choices and what impact it has on marketing strategies, recommendation and social media on why people select a book over another one. The result of our study has showed us that men in um, most common um, problems, they deal with it on their own and that is matching the previous re research on this. And it shows that men may choose to avoid external help, um, but there's a supposition that it could be due to stigma or social norms. Um, it highlights the need to address really the issue of men um, underutilization of the services available to them. Um, Further research will develop more targeted mental health intervention and support service for this men and increase awareness and education about the benefit of seeking professional help and breaking the stigma around mental health issues. To help create a more tailored support for men's mental health needs, we need to develop a gender sensitive intervention. We need to address the stigma associated with men's mental health. We also need to promote help seeking behavior, assess how mental health professional can help around the stigma. And we need to develop evidence-based strategy to challenge and reduce the stigma Overall, we found that professional credibility and tailored support are crucial for men in mental health and self-help field. Future research should provide valuable insight into preferences and coping strategies. And also collaborative efforts can improve mental health outcome for men and the broader population and further research is necessary to understand men's mental health concerns and create interventions for it. Um, personal, my personal research direction um, in the future will be to explore the role of counselling in addressing the unique challenge faced by men with mental health concerns and also how to promote men's engagement with counselling services. This study take on message is that it highlights the importance of addressing the challenges um, faced uniquely by men with mental health concerns and also to promote their engagement with counselling services and professional 
and it should be a priority for future research amongst our professionals because men's matter too. Thank you very much for watching my presentation and keeping attention. Um, I hope you find it interesting and that there's some informations in there that are really insightful. Um, if you would like to ask any question, please leave them in the comments of the YouTube video and I will answer them straight away. Uh, thanks again for watching my presentation. Goodbye.